Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new Roblox video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get a front page Roblox game, okay? Now this is kind of like a, you know, something that it seems like it's kind of hard to learn and hard to do, and it is, but um, I'm going to explain, you know, like a lot of stuff here in a second. Alright, so first things first, a quick disclaimer, okay? I normally go by the model of like, only learn from people who have actually done or like are doing what you want to do, and I actually personally have never had a front page game. But, okay, I haven't had one yet, alright, but I will be analyzing some of like the best like front page games and kind of explaining the characteristics of, of these front page games, um, so I think that's really important still. And also, I will be interviewing someone who actually has had a front page game for about a month, and um, it was pretty successful, they made a lot of you know good money and Robux off of it, but yes, I will be interviewing someone toward the end of the video who actually has had a front page game. So yeah, there is some credibility for this. Alright, anyways. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe for more Roblox development videos, and yeah, let's get started. Alright, so first things first, um, designing for engagement, okay? So, if you're making a Roblox game, engagement is like one of the most important metrics to, like, to cater to in creating a game, because like right here it says engaged players are going to come back more often which is true because they're engaged and they're going to play longer which is good because if you want to get on the front page you need to have you know players playing and you want the players to come back more often and actually they're even more likely to spend money in your game which is also you know a good a good side thing uh anyways or a good side effect i guess so um increasing play time is also very important because you know you want people to come back and play your game for long periods of times so this is very important now how do you actually design your game for or how do you actually design your game to be more engaged and to get more engagement right and longer play time and longer play time stuff like that well actually roblox put an article themselves on literally how to increase engagement which i'm going to show you guys right here in a second and now listen you, you might be thinking okay well you know, it's it's just a Roblox article, but seriously, like if Roblox is putting out this stuff, it's because it's helpful, okay? Like they, they want to teach you something, okay? Roblox wants you wants your game to succeed because they're gonna make money from your game too. You get what I'm saying? Roblox wants to see you succeed, so that that's good, you know. So uh, also, if you guys want to actually, I'll explain this in a second. All right. Anyways, let me show you guys an article real quick, okay? So. Alright, so here's the article, Designing for Engagement. Alright, so engagement is an important metric because it influences both our attention and monetization. And this is the part I just put in my slides. But um, as you can see here, it says creating engagement requires understanding what motivates engagement, okay? So basically, um, you need to understand what actually motivates their engagement. So in this article, they actually break down five things that they think, you know, motivate engagement. And they actually are pretty interesting to read too. And also some key terms they're going to mention here, which is um, the daily active users, which is the number of unique players in your game, and then the monthly active users which is the number of unique players who play your game in a month okay pretty simple stuff all right anyway so just keep this in mind all right so number one the first the first thing they say is social okay creating and enabling social connections between players is a strong motivator especially in a platform like roblox okay obviously social and features are important because it you know players can play, players can make a connection in your game with all the people and they'll keep coming back all right sort of like um uh, like building a community, as it says here, building a community is important. But anyways, let's go ahead and read what they have to say about this. Okay, so first things first, social areas. So provide game in your areas, or provide areas in your game that encourage such a social gameplay, such as lobbies and role playing spaces, right? And this is good. Um, and it says here's adjusted metrics, which are, as you can see, the average number of new in-game friends made in a day, and um, the average session length. So this this can tell you basically like how these are the metrics provided by Roblox, right? When you're in your analytics, but basically this tells you. Um, you know what they what they'll increase all right so community forums build a community around your game through channels like roblox groups twitter and discord um, competitive and cooperative gameplay design gameplay that requires multiplayer interactions such as pvp, play, PvP. Um, players like to show off right um but stuff like that social groups right it's good to have social groups people you know create like little clans or guilds imagine you know if you, if you have people creating like clans or guilds in your game then they're going to come back to see their other clan members and guilds and stuff like that right this is obviously important stuff right um and obviously showing off avatar too is pretty cool um okay then the next thing i say is variety so a variety you know is obviously you know pretty simple it's for variety <laughs> um but as you can see here one important thing is progression all right you want to unlock new stuff you want to be able to get to the next level you want to be able to feel like you're progressing in something you know what i'm saying you want to feel progression this is important all right provide like both casual and enthusiastic gameplay um so as you can see here they say casual role play round based play uh mini games and then enthusiast is like um, grinding, exploration, uh, like skill-based gameplay, and then multiple ways to like win in your game. All right. Uh, obviously, updates are very important. That's going to keep players coming back and more engaged. Uh, PvP content is, you know, it's it's a good thing because 
it's like they say here it's an like unlimited variety because if you're having pvp content that's content generated by another person which is you know whatever they decide to do with so yeah anyways so emergent gameplay when results when your game offers flexible systems so basically i guess do stuff that or allow players to do the unexpected and find ways of playing that your game didn't intend that's pretty cool um i feel like that kind of reminds me of like that lumber tycoon game where like you could do like the quest to find those axes or whatever all right, anyways, um, so convenience, make it easy for your players to start and continue your game. Obviously, you want your game to be very convenient, you know, very simple to understand and get into, um, so that way more players can understand it and play it, right? Because you got to keep in mind your audience. You know, you, 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 the Roblox is a lot of, you know, uh, kid players or whatever, and you want to make sure that those people are understanding how to play your game. You know what I'm saying? So stuff like that. All right, and then achievement, as you can see here, some players are motivated by a sense of achievement, competition, or mastery. You know, balancing a progression is one way to create a sense of achievement and variety, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, leaderboards. Leaderboards are very important, right? It's good that people like to compete. People like to be competitive. They like to see the top of the leaderboard, like to see all that stuff, right? That's important. Um, create badges. That's important, too. Badges are cool because they can not only, people can see them at the bottom of your thing, but also, you know, I guess it kind of incentivizes. Honestly, badges aren't the most important, but they are kind of cool, pretty easy to add to, so might as well add them. Um, and then skill-based gameplay, you know, people have to practice to do stuff, and if people are so, you know, so used to practicing your game, they're going to have an investment into it where the point where they, you know, they really like this game, and they want to keep coming back to it again and again and again. And then visual progress indicators. Um, this means, like, you know, experience points. Like, whenever you pick up a coin or something, you see that, you know, that, that satisfying sound effect. And then you, 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 you know, see that little thing that says plus seven coins or whatever it is, right? A cool little animation thing, stuff like that. And then, you know, level up, you know, like animation, stuff like that, too. Like, you know, you just make sure, you know, you have visual progress indicators, which are, it's a, it's a great idea. All right. And then investment. All right. This not only refers to money that players spend in your game, right? So if people are spending money in your game, obviously they're going to come back because they spent that money and they want to, you know, be able to use what they spent the money on. And, um, but also like they invest time and effort and dedication into your game too, right? So um, the more they have contributed or built in your game, the more rest of their game you're playing. So as you can see, like um, allowing players to have a space that is theirs to customize, such as a home, which they can buy or build out. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like if someone has a home, right? So in blocks where they have a home, right? And they want to keep building it and they already have progress, they're gonna keep coming back because they already invested so much time and effort into that, that they wanna come build their house more and more and more. You get what I'm saying? Uh, building system, a building system, as you can see here, like it says, you know, like a, building system uh, currency over time so like um, provide short-term and long-term goals that your players want to save up currency to buy obviously and then skill based gameplay this one I feel like it's been mentioned every single one but yeah but yeah that's pretty cool so that's how you can sort of increase your engagement right because engagement is important you want players to be engaged into your game you want them to enjoy this you know it, it's important just use these articles by Roblox all right these are really underrated and they can teach you a lot of cool stuff um, so yeah anyways all right, let's go back to the um, slides. All right, so next, um, very important as well, have a good marketing or advertising strategy, okay? Many people underestimate this, but like if you want to get on the front page, you need to have a good marketing um, or advertising strategy, right? And the easiest and most forward that people mainly do is they just go and, you know, go to sponsor or they go to make an ad and then they just sponsor the game or advertise the game. Now, this does work. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, say it doesn't. It's definitely, that, that definitely, definitely works. And it's, a, you know, it's very uh, important. That's how people get Robux investments, right? To sponsor their game. But there are other ways to get players than just Robux advertising, right? Like, think about this. If your favorite YouTuber is playing the, a game and you can play that game, Game, you're probably gonna go play that game right it looks fun they, you see them playing it it looks interesting so you go play it too right so you can pay influencers or youtubers to make videos in your game that definitely helps that is I, I, I've I I know it works I'll, I'll explain actually in a second here how it works but um, you know obviously promoting your game via other robust games some people actually like you'll have like teleportation systems to their other games which I mean I don't do that but you can do that but you know just just understand there's not there's not just one way to get players on roblox right um but yeah that's just something to keep in mind all right now this is probably the easiest and not really an exact tip right but it's what i do for really anything i want to do right or anything i want to learn or be good at right is i study the people who are doing the best right so study front page games and get a front page game okay so think of it like this right let's say there's a front page robust game okay and they're on the front page for a reason, okay? So you join that game and you study what they're doing, all right? You keep you you write down. You're like, okay, they're doing this. They they normally have this like element of like randomness. You can get you know they have an egg. They have this. They have this. They have this. 
understand what these front page games have in common and then see how you can implement it into your own games. Because if these games are on the front page, they're on the front page for a reason. They're on the front page because people are playing them and they're engaged into these games. So study successful like games and you can be like them. You know, If you understand why they're successful and then you can implement those things into your own game, that's how you can become successful yourself. It's the easiest, most straightforward way. I mean, I, I literally do this with like pretty much everything I do in life. I, I, I understand, I look at the top people doing it or the top whatever, right? And then I understand how they do it. I try to learn and then I implement what I can into my own um, whatever I'm doing, right? So this is not even just like a <laughs> games, but this is a general life tip, like for real. Like this can help you out when you're doing anything. Um, but, you know, obviously it works in games just as well as it does anything else. So, yeah. Anyways, next. All right, so one thing to understand too whenever you're you know making these games uh, and you want to get a front page game, it, it, it's good that you know what you want and a front page game is you know pretty cool to have. But just so you know, it's, it's not easy, all right? The front page game or front page game is, is impressive because there's only so many front page slots, okay? So the truth is your first game probably won't reach the front page and you, you can't be discouraged from that, okay? There's no one's really first game reached the front page either, okay? So just know that every time you release a game, you're learning more and more and more to get to that next step of getting to the front page. So don't get discouraged if your first game doesn't reach the front page. Just try again and try again. And if you give up, you will never reach the front page, okay? So just understand that if you want something and you give up, you'll never get it, all right? That's that's all I'm going to say. All right, anyway, so it's time for the interview now. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Rainway Gaming, okay? He's a Roblox YouTuber, a good friend of mine. We, uh, he actually started creating and managing games. Um, but then he ended up reaching the front page with a game called Power Sim on his second game release. So yeah, he's actually a YouTuber too. I don't really upload that much anymore, but yeah. Um, his game was Power Simulator, and actually it stayed on the front page for about a month. As you can see, it's right there, and yeah. All right, let's go and interview him right now, and I'm excited to see this. Let's let's go. All right, guys, so now it is time for our interview. We're going to go ahead and call with the person who actually made the front page game. So uh, I actually have him in the call right now. His name is Rainway. Rainway, what's up, bro? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, man? Okay, so thank you so much for coming on. Um, I oh, hope... you like ignored my how you been question. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I'm good. Uh, you know, just recording this video, but um, yeah, pretty good. Oh, that's good, man. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, anyways, so thank you for coming on, and um, you know, we just I just wanted to interview you because you actually had a front page game, and you know, it's good to actually learn from people who actually you know have done what you want to do. So that's why you know I brought you on, obviously. So. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so I have a few questions here. I'm going to uh, tell you, and then you're just going to give me whatever you think on them. Okay, so. Okay, that's us go ahead. First question. Uh, so what gave you the idea for creating this game? Like, why did you decide to create this game in the first place? Well, so uh, I used to play this game on my channel called Superpower Training Simulator, right? I'm sure a lot of people heard of it. And it was a pretty fun game, but the problem with it, the owners, like, gave up on it. And it was still doing pretty good. They were still making a good amount of money from it still had like 10,000 players when they gave up on it but they didn't update the game for like I don't know what was it like half a year or something like that so I decided to take it upon myself to make a game that's like inspired by theirs and the community loved it so okay cool so yeah so some people so for some people who don't know Renway is another youtuber actually and he's, he's also a dev uh, he's made multiple games now but yeah, so basically he got inspired by another game, and, um, you know, he saw an opportunity there. All right, so um, why do you think your game reached the front page? Because other people have made games similar to that as well, right? Like, why does yours have the front page and not other people's? Yeah, but nobody had, like, the audience I had for it on YouTube. Like, my whole channel was dedicated to it, so all the players, I know, I knew what the community wanted, so I did that, and it took off before we even ran a single ad on it or a sponsor. It already had, like, 5K playing. And a thing a lot of people don't realize is YouTubers help so much when it comes to, like, the promotion of games. Yeah. So you definitely should, like, hit up, like, bigger YouTubers and stuff. Hit them up in, like, their business email. For and sure. try to get them to, like, promote your game. It helps a little bit. Yeah, people don't know that me to me before, too. And it's, like, it's a great idea. Yeah, so, like, you just think the way you marketed and advertised the game was the reason why it blew up so well? And, yeah, and also, like, you knew what the, what the community wanted, too. So that's good. All right, cool, yeah. So just, you know, he has a good marketing strategy. Just, you know, people under us underestimate YouTubers and stuff like that, but seriously, that's a really big potential to them. Uh, but, yeah. All right, anyway, so have you had any other games that reached the front page before? I have not, but I'm actually working on the sequel to Power Sim, which I expect that to do pretty well. Because I learned a lot from, like, the first game and, like, things we did wrong in that game. So we're going to correct those mistakes for the second one and drop that pretty soon. We also got, like, a... 
Apocalypse Rising 1 remake that I'm working on right now. It's not like the same thing. We're not using any assets from APOC 1. But uh, we actually have Albert stuff on the project. Well, Flamingo. We have Tanker, Bandites, all them. All the like old APOC YouTubers. And we're just making a game to bring back the nostalgia of that one. So that's pretty cool. All right, cool. So how do you think that's going to work uh, competing with the APOC 2, though? Well, the thing about them is that uh, Gus has the zombies like super strong in APOC 2. And the looting system is just so complicated. Like, it takes forever to, like, open up, um, like, boxes and stuff to find loot in it. And the thing about our game, it's so simple where you just, like, walk into a room like APOC 1 and you just, like, pick up loot off the floor. You see what's in the room before, like, without yeah. having to, like, go loot a bunch of boxes and crates and stuff. All right, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so definitely just think of your competitors when you're making your games, guys. But, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so... As you... well as, like, they have, um... Well... No, you're um, good. No, no, you're good, bro. <laughs> Say it. See, APOC 2... It also costs money to join it, too. Yeah, It's like yeah. 300 Robux now or something, so I think that gives us a little bit of an edge. True. Okay, Um. so do you think you can reach front page again? Like, you think it's possible for you to do it? Oh, definitely. I'm just like, that game, like, taught me so much, Power Sim did. And I know in the future, like, I'm only getting started, you know? So just scratching the surface. Okay, so this actually, this isn't on the list, but now I have a question because you said that. So what do you think is the number one thing you learn about Power Sim? Uh, to reach the front page like what's the number one thing that you could uh you know say you learn from it definitely like the way you market it and your general game idea you have to have something that people actually enjoy like you can't copy a game exactly and expect it to like pop off you have to change up a few things and stuff like that and in power sim we did different thing things different that like made it beat our competition in a sense by like having live events and stuff that they didn't really do in superpower training some later yeah Okay, cool. All right, so I actually had a question about, like, if you had one piece of advice for reaching a front page game, what would you say? And you said, like, you, you know, basically just kind of the way you market the game. You know, just using... Yeah, pretty much. Just using influencers and, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that, man, also sponsoring. So, like, um, actually, I have another question now. So, like, how much would you recommend putting into sponsoring or advertising, whatever you want, whatever you do, actually? How much would you uh, recommend on that? It, it really depends on the game. A good game could probably front page with only like 50k robux but it really depends on like what you're like marketing your game towards if you're like wanting to be a uh, mobile dominated or like pc dominated it's yeah. really just how you like split up your money okay cool. like games like flee the facility for example they're like heavily dominated on mobile and if your game's like a mobile game you definitely want to like target the mobile audience and drop sponsors all into that so a good game could sponsor with maybe 50k 100k robux if you really want to push it i get what you're saying okay interesting all right so this is our final question but um you know you might not you actually might not want to answer this but how much like robux did the game make in total like if you don't mind us asking i mean the last time i checked it made around like 90 million or something like that but Nine? that's um before the robux takes their cut oh, okay yeah dang okay all right, that's that's pretty good, bro. Okay, <laughs> I hope that's some inspiration for you guys. You know, it's really possible. Rainbow never had a front page game before at all, and that was actually the first game we ever released, right? Yeah, it was. Well, technically not really. There was another game, but oh yeah, yeah, I remember the other one. Yeah, okay. You remember the Skywars game? Yeah. I mean, it yeah. didn't do, do too bad, but not okay. nearly as good as um Power Sim. Yeah. All right, well, that's cool. I mean, yeah, just just know it's really possible. You know, Rainway, you know, he he released the game once and he tried again. And, you know, he managed to get the front page. Like you said, though, just listen to what he has to say, you know. You know, just the marketing strategy is obviously really important. And, uh, you know, if he if he's done it, then obviously there's something to learn from him. So, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so um, I actually have your Twitter right here linked, uh, at Rainway Gaming on Twitter. If you guys want awesome. to follow him or, or if any of you actually want to work for him, he actually might be hiring some devs right now. I don't know. DM him. Uh, do, do you, are, are you hiring Yeah, devs? I'm done to partner with some people, you know, like okay. do some more projects and stuff. I always love doing that. All right, cool, cool. All right, so uh, thanks a lot for coming on, bro. Any last uh, final words you want to say? Uh, use code Rainway. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, bro. We'll see you later. Yeah, no problem. All right, peace. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like always, guys, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. But, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, honestly. Just, just um, 
rewatch this video if you didn't understand something. But you know, my biggest tip honestly was just take into account like what the front page games are doing. Because if they're if they're on the front page, they're on the front page for a reason. Okay, implement what you can into your own game. But yeah. Anyways, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or uh, suggestions in the below. Um, suggestions below. And yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe for more videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.